Hey, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to get started with memory keeping in your Happy Planner. I want to show you some of my favorite supplies that I love to use. I'm going to give you some of my tips, and then I'm also going to show you some of my uh, memory keeping spreads that I've recently done inside of my memory keeper. So when it comes to supplies, the first thing you're going to need is obviously something to house all of your memories, right? So I have a big Happy Planner planner here. This is not one of their memory keepers. They do have memory keepers, but I'll show you that here in a second. This is just a regular planner. This is from the Wild Style Collection, and I really love this one because it has a neutral layout on it. So that's my favorite. I really love to use it, but I'm using this one now first instead of the memory keeper because this one's dated and the memory keeper is undated, so I can use this one whenever. But I do love the Happy Planner's memory keepers because in the back of them, there are these fun little sheets that you can use and you can decorate them, sorry. Um, fun little sheets that you can use and decorate and create fun little spreads with, document birthdays, vacations, there's a Christmas one in here, we have autumn memories, gratitude, just some fun little inserts that you can use throughout your memory keeper. So I do love the memory keepers for that reason, but it really doesn't matter what you use if you wanna use a memory keeper or if you wanna use a regular planner. Now I like the big because the big has the most amount of space. So you have plenty of space to do, uh, to like lay out your photos, to journal, to you know add stickers or whatever you wanna do. But really size is a personal preference. It's entirely up to you. I've seen uh, people do this in a classic, in, in a mini, and it looks gorgeous. So size-wise, that's entirely up to you. Now you'll also need uh, a way to print photos. I'm going to talk about a couple of options here. I am currently using the Canon Selfie, and I 1000% recommend this thing. It is awesome. It's really convenient to be able to print photos at home. But listen, if you don't have one of these or you can't make the investment into one right now, I totally understand. I actually printed my photos from Walmart for a couple of years and it was a part of my weekly routine. So on Saturdays, I would order the photos and then Sunday when we would go to the grocery store, we would pick up our photos and then I would use those to memory keep. But I really like this. It's really convenient. And this is also nice to have because this helps you with not getting behind on memory keeping like I am right now. Um, it's currently December and I'm just now in October in my memory keeper. So I'm trying to catch up with it. And this helps with that, which I got, I got behind on memory keeping before I picked this thing up. Uh, so that's why I'm behind mainly because of COVID and not going to the grocery stores often and stuff like that. That really got me behind. But this is helping me to get caught up and that's why I really recommend it. If you're gonna dive fully into memory keeping, definitely add this to your list at some point. It's not something that you have to have in the beginning, but at some point, I really recommend making the investment into it because it's going to uh, be so beneficial and it's really not that expensive. Now I will say when if you go to like Walmart and you get photos printed, they're really high quality photos and they're very inexpensive at Walmart. So I love that. But you can also go to like Walgreens, there's CVS, there's tons of different places online that you can order photos and have them printed. And some places will even ship them to you. So you just need a way to print photos. It's entirely up to you on how you do that. Now, when it comes to sticking your photos down inside of your memory keeper, I like the Tombow double-sided adhesive tape. This is my favorite, but a glue stick will work just fine. You just need some way to stick your photos down inside of your memory keeper. And I really like the Tombow, but you can use whatever you have. It doesn't matter. And then something else I love to have whenever I'm memory keeping is stickers. Obviously, right? Gotta have the stickers. Now these are stickers from the Happy Planner. They are from their memory keeping line. But if you can't get your hands on these stickers, don't worry. Obviously the Happy Planner has tons of other sticker books and I actually use all of the different stickers that I have. I don't just use the memory keeping ones whenever I'm memory keeping. But I do love having stickers. This is a fun way to just kind of decorate your spreads and make them look super cute. So I love having stickers for memory keeping. Now something else I love is, is this cardstock pack from the Happy Planner. I actually hoard this because it's so cute and I can't, it's hard to find and I, I'm, I'm hoping that you are able to get your hands on it. Um, I've seen these before at Michael's, so you guys might still be able to find them. It'll be where like scrapbooking stuff is. That's where you can find the Happy Planner memory keeping stuff at. But I really love this thing. This is really, really nice. Now, if you cannot find this, don't worry. Regular cardstock works out great. I actually have some that I use 
This is just a pack of cardstock that I picked up at Walmart, so I use this. And then I also like to get some fun decorative cardstock sheets. These ones are from Hobby Lobby, I do believe. And I just like using cardstock to, you can decorate your planner pages with it. You can create stuff just on the cardstock. So I love cardstock for that. Let me actually show you something that I recently did that I think is really cute. This is a little thing that I'm doing in December. I'm taking a photo a day and then I'm journaling about it. And so I've got some cardstock here and then I flip it over and there's cardstock on the back. And I just took my Tombow double-sided tape and I stuck both of those together. And then I've been taking photos each day and I just got started it's only on day three um, but I've been taking photos and I'm just going to start documenting the month of December like this so I really love cardstock for this reason so you can get um, cardstock you know that's festive and fun and is for whatever season is going on so I really love cardstock for that reason it's something that's fun to play with and to decorate with inside of your memory keeper okay now let's dive into some tips one of my biggest tips when it comes to memory keeping um, this is to me an absolute must. I take the notes app on my phone and every evening as a part of my evening routine, I document the things that happen throughout the day. And I will literally document anything and everything. If I had a headache and we didn't do much but hang out all day, I document that. If we had to run errands and go to the grocery store and my kids said something funny or we watched a movie together or I spent the day cleaning the house or I filmed YouTube videos, like whatever it is, it doesn't matter. I will try to document as much as I can from the day. And then what I do is I will take it, I will copy it from the notes app on my phone and I will paste it into Microsoft Word document. I print it out, I punch it, and then I stick it inside of my memory keeper in the monthly section. This is really awesome because right now with me being behind, this is helping me to remember what was going on. And so I really love that. But this is also a great way to look back at the little things that are happening. Memory keeping is not just the big moments, right? It has a lot to do with the little things that we're doing every single day and the little things that are happening. I love those little moments in life and I love to be able to look back on them and see those. So I love this sheet for that because it shows me all the little things, but then I also have the big things in there. And then it's also a guide for whenever I'm actually memory keeping because I uh, can look back at this and remember what was happening that day. And the way I do it is I have one note for each month. And so I'll just uh, title it with the month and the year. And then at the beginning of the month, I go down and I number it for the entire month. And then, like I said, each evening, as a part of my evening routine, I document the things that happen. And I'm not perfect at this. I have days that I didn't do, uh, I didn't document anything. But uh, I definitely recommend this. This is something that has been so helpful. I've actually been doing this for a really long time. And another tip to help you get into the habit of doing this is to set an alarm on your phone that reminds you to do it. So I have an alarm set for 930 and then that reminds me to do my documentation from the day. So that's one of my biggest tips is to do that. And then let's go through some of these spreads that I've done. I'm going to give you some tips and I'm going to go all over the place with things. So just kind of bear with me here. Um, these little things here on the photos, these are snap in tabs from the happy planner. These things are awesome. They're so helpful whenever you have something that like you don't have the room to punch it and you just stick it inside your planner. I really love the snap in tabs, but see these stickers here that I used inside of this spread. These are not from the memory keeping stickers. So I just want to show you that you don't have to have those stickers to do it. You can use any stickers that you want. These are from, what's that sticker book called? I have it right here. It was the color story, the big color story. And I just journal, I just write down some things that happened throughout the day. And I use that sheet, like I said, that I print to help me do that. So there's one spread. Here's another one. I used the stickers from the Wild Style Collection to create this spread. This one didn't have a whole lot going on that week, which is totally fine. And then this week I had a lot going on, a lot of photos, and I used one of those sheets from the cardstock pack. My son and my niece went camping with my parents, and so I documented their little camping trip. This is where I redid my office. And if we go into September, now something I used to do in the monthly pages, I don't do it anymore, but I, I should, it was really cute, is I would take a photo every single day. 
which I could start doing that now for December, right? Since I'm already taking a photo uh, for this little thing that I was creating. But I used to make, make sure I took a photo every single day or I tried to take a photo every day. And then I would take, let me grab it. This little punch that I picked up from Hobby Lobby and I would punch the photo and then I would stick the photo down. And then the whole entire month had these little circle photos on them. It looked really, really cute. But that's just a tip for the monthly if you're kind of thinking about what you can do in the monthly spread. You can also write out like a highlight of the day. You can decorate it. You can uh, let your kids draw in it or something. It's entirely up to you. But that's just some ideas for the monthly spread. And then here is another spread that I did. And I want to talk about this really quickly. This is something that I started doing a while back. It's called Project Life. And they are a scrapbooking company and they have it to where you can uh, do scrapbooking digitally or you can have things uh, physically shipped to you and you have them in your hand. I like doing it digitally and then I print this stuff out. So this is a thing that I made from an app on my phone. The app is called Project Life and you can download it. And then they have like some little packs that you can buy, I guess is the best way to explain it. Some of the packs have cards with sayings on them. Some of the uh, packs have cards with where like where you can journal on them and stuff like that. So I really love those. They also have where you can make different collages with different layouts. So that's something fun that I like to do and play around with. And then I stick those inside of my planner. So I really do love Project Life. It's a really cool, cool thing to play around with. There's the end of that one. And then these ones here, these are actually photos that I had printed at Walmart. And I really love whenever they come like this because you have plenty of space to punch them, but you can also add stickers to them too if you want. So I really like these. If you go to walmart.com and you go to order photos, you choose collage and then you choose your photo size and then you add your photos to it from there. And then you, you know, they'll print them and then you pick them up or have them ship them to you. So I did these, these are really cute. And then here's one that I did. This was an eight by 10. And to add the text to this one, I used, it's called InShot. And I used that on my phone to add the text to it. I will uh, link it down below in the description box or I'll throw a picture up up here of what the app looks like. It's a really cool little app. And I actually edit some of my videos, not my YouTube videos, but some of my videos that I put on Instagram, I edit it in that app. So it's a really fun app to use. There's the rest of that week. Here's another week. This was one of my favorite spreads I've done so far. I really like the way that this one turned out. It was really cute. Those little snap-in tabs are awesome. Now this week, I do not really like the way that this one turned out, if I'm being honest. And I'm kind of glad that I'm showing you this because I want you to know that when you first get started, there's going to be weeks where you create spreads and you're like, Ugh, I, I don't like this, I'm not very good at it. Or you hop on Instagram and Pinterest and you start seeing all of these gorgeous spreads and then you start comparing yourself. Like, no, don't go down that rabbit hole. I've been memory keeping for a couple of years now and I still create spreads that I'm not a fan of. So it happens. It's not a big deal. Just keep going. You'll get better with it. And then you'll have weeks like me where, you know, things happen and you just don't really like the way that it turned out. And that's totally okay. This isn't so much about the spreads. It's about documenting the memories, right? When you, when you look back at these in a few years, you're going to be like, oh, I remember this or, oh, I remember that. And you'll remember those things. So don't, don't stress out if your spreads don't turn out the way that you want them to. So here we are into October. Now this week, I just got this done very quickly. I mean, you can see here, I didn't even put anything down on this week. I didn't have hardly any photos. And this little sheet here, I also created this in Project Life. I printed it out on a piece of uh, printer paper, punched it, stuck it in my planner, and that was that for this week. And sometimes that happens too, where you really just don't have very many photos or you know, a cute little spread to go along with it. And then this one is another one of my favorites. I love this one so much. And something else I like to do is to get on Pinterest and I will find photos that kind of match the theme that I'm going for. So like this one, I did a fall one. So I got this photo from uh, Pinterest and I printed it off. These are from Pinterest. This is from Pinterest. I found the Scouts Honor on Pinterest and I printed it off because my son had his first Cub Scout meeting that week. So that was really cool. 
I really love those. And then this one and this one, I created those on Project Life. And like I said, that's one of the reasons why I love it is because you can journal on it. Actually, I don't think I mentioned that earlier. Either way, I'm going to mention it again now. If I'm repeating myself, I'm sorry. But I love Project Life because my handwriting is not very good. And so this allows me to be able to create cute little journaling photos I can stick inside of my memory keeper that's actually legible. Like you can read them. They look really cute. So I love Project Life for that. And this isn't sponsored by anybody. I'm just sharing with you all the things that I love to do. Now here's another spread that I recently made. This was using the cardstock sheet from the cardstock pack. I love this one. This week I had a lot of photos. This one is not necessarily my favorite, but it didn't turn out too bad. I really like this page in the center. I thought that one turned out really cute. Like this one's from, um, I wrote that out on Project Life and then I printed it on the Canon selfie. I got my Happy Planner stickers in here. Just some, some fun little things happening. And this is where I'm currently at with trying to catch up with memory keeping. So I am a little bit behind. I'm trying to get caught up with it. Uh, and I like to just keep a divider in here so I know what week I'm on whenever I'm memory keeping. That way it's a little bit easier to get to it. But uh, my biggest tip is just to, to get started and to know that you do not need all the things. You do not have to have all the sticker books. You do not have to have um, a memory keeping planner if you can't find one and you need to use a regular planner. That's totally fine. You don't have to have a Canon selfie to print photos. You can print them from Walmart. You can print them from Walgreens or CVS or whatever. Uh, you don't have to have, I don't know, other things, right? Actually, when I first started memory keeping, I didn't have very many things. I think I had my planner, I had a few stickers, and I was printing Walmart or photos from Walmart, and that was it. And I had a pen, right, and like a pair of scissors. And I was just journaling and doing stuff like that. And I would show you those memory keepers because I have a couple of them, but I have those put up in storage and I don't want to pull those out. But um, I didn't have much, and I just want to share that with you. You don't need all the things in order to memory keep and create fun little spreads. And also try not to compare yourself. I know whenever I first got started with this, I got really hung up on that, that I wasn't very good or that I wasn't creative. And it kind of just, it made you not want to do it. You know what I mean? Where you're like, eh, I really don't know if I want to do this because I'm not very good at it. Like, don't, don't go down that rabbit hole. I've been there. It's hard to get out of. Uh, just stay away from that one, okay? Uh, just know that you'll get better the more that you do it. And I just want to encourage you to do that and to try and to... Um, just to know that it's a process and it's a learning curve and it's something that can be fun and that you will look back on over time. Like I look back at my old spreads and I'm like, whoa, that was not too hot, you know? Uh, and that's okay. It's something that you can look back on and see how much you've grown, but then you can also see the memories. And that's what this is about. It's about memory keeping. It's about looking back at the little things that are happening every day in your life with your family and your loved ones. So just wanted to give you that word of encouragement. And I think that's it as far as supplies go. I have some other things that I use, but I honestly don't use them very often. So I'm not going to show them just because I don't use them very often. I don't think that it's something that's like, you know, you need to pick up or whatever. But basics, you need a planner or a memory keeper. Just somewhere to put your photos and your journaling and your memories into maybe some stickers, just a couple of sticker books and a way to print photos and like a pen and a pair of scissors. That's pretty much it. The cardstock is even something that you really don't even have to have. And as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I really appreciate you watching my video. I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next one.